live call-in talk show. Dial one 932 and join the conversation here on TalkTimmyRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. To you, we say hello. Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go on the world's greatest radio. You are now in touch with the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is radio the way it should be heard. Uh, we are going to be talking metaphorically today about a subject that Mr. Fuller often refers to in the movie The Shawshank Redemption, but we're going to be speaking about a certain part of The Shawshank Redemption and have Mr. Fuller expound on it. The uh, questions or the references are going to be metaphorically, but we're going to do this to lead you or suggest to you directions in the tearing down of these strongholds and to help produce justice. T t the title of today's show is going to be The Rock Hammer. You need to know what a rock ham hammer is and how it works. We're also going to be doing it in this hour. This is also going to be a donate hour. So get ready for that. We need your funds to donate to the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller. Now, you can get in touch with the show by calling 1-877-932-9766. You can also go to the TalkTainMentRadio.com homepage, which was on the screen there. And what you want to do when you do that is hit the Listen Live button. Listen Live button where you can listen live to the compensatory concept. You can also, and I'm going to do this by memory, so hope I get it right, you can also go to the uh, YouTube channel, type in the word Talktainment. I believe you scroll down to the word radio and then type in the word Talktainment number two, and you can see and hear us live on the YouTube channel. And while you're there, hit the uh, uh, like and subscribe button. You can also, I believe, do that on the Talktainment site. We would prefer you do that on the Talktainment site as we're trying to do something there. And lastly, you can also go to facebook.com forward slash Talktainment and you can hear a replay of the whole show. Okay, that being out of the way, I think that's it. 1-877-932-9766. Let me say good morning to Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller, good morning. Good morning. And today's subject was chosen from uh, the movie, The Shawshank Redemption. And you have said many times that we can gain a lot of lessons from looking at that movie. And uh, one of the things that was brought out is a uh, rock hammer. Now, I know you know what that is, but metaphorically, well, what, what is a rock hammer, Mr. Fuller, and how does a rock hammer work? Okay, we'll work, we'll work on that. Okay. A rock hammer is a small tool, evidently, that is used to shape rocks. That's how it was described in the movie. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of a rock hammer before I saw the movie. So I just looked at the movie and took it for what they presented in the movie, a rock hammer. And it was used eventually to help a prisoner get out of the prison that he was in, uh, the part played by Tim Robbins, and uh, the movie name for Tim Robbins was Andy Dufresne. He used that rock hammer slowly to carve his way out of, through the walls 
of the prison and get into the piping system, the drainage system, and that way he got out beyond the walls of the prison that he was in, which was called Shawshank. That was the name of the prison. And uh, so that's what I know about a rock hammer. That's that's the extent of my knowledge of a rock hammer. I've never used a rock hammer. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what one was until I saw the movie. Okay. In which case, uh, in the movie itself, the character called Red, played by Morgan Freeman, had the ass hand of the frame. What's a rock hammer? All right. And uh, Andy the Frame told him what it was. Yes. Okay, now, in the fight for justice, we are metaphorically going to be using different types of tools. And in this case, the rock hammer was was mentioned and um, brought out. Now, if, if I remember correctly, it is very, very small. It's not like the c- conventional hammer. Is that correct? Correct. In fact, uh, Red said, uh, played the uh, character played by Morgan Freeman in the movie Shawshank Redemption. Red said to the prisoner, fellow prisoner, and to the frame, uh, <laughs> uh, or rather, his voiceover said it that it would take Andy uh, 600 years, I believe, to carve his way out of the prison. Shawshank with that rock hammer. Yes. Okay, now, to uh, to anesthetize uh, size the, uh, maybe even some of the inmates, uh, but definitely the prison staff, we requ- required Andy Dufresne some thought, some speech, and some action. So when he got this rock hammer, he had to think, what his purpose was in using a very small instrument to attain his further goal. Uh, goal. So focusing in on, on that, in the tearing down of the racial system of white supremacy that we are, are under, metaphorically, what kind of tools do we use in this struggle for justice, using the rock hammer as a background. Certainly there are more tools, but using the rock hammer as a background. Well, the tool that I would recommend would be my book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. That's the equivalent of the rock hammer in Shawshank Redemption mm-hmm. as a tool. And uh, that, that, you know, just follow the instructions in the book as an individual, as each individual victim, each individual prisoner of war, which is what you are, according to, if you are classified as non-white, in a white supremacist system. You're also a prisoner of war, and you're behind the walls of that prison, and the walls of that prison are limitless. Uh, You actually have actually have to use the rock hammer to erode the prison itself to actually bring down the entire prison system. Mm, yes. This thing is busting out of the prison. Yes. You have to actually just eliminate the prison and re- and take the same prison, what had been a prison, which is the entire planet in the system of white supremacy for a victim of white supremacy, then you have to replace that with an institution that is not a prison, but an institution called justice. Yes. Now, Andy used that rock hammer, and I use the word anesthetize, the guards or inmate, even the warden, because he he used it also to make, uh, let's see, those um, pieces of a chessboard, am I not, is that correct? Yes, which means you have to know the entire board. He, he made pieces, he used the rock hammer to fashion pieces on a chessboard, and when you're playing chess, I don't know anything about chess, but I've been told something about it, that basically it's sophisticated checkers. 
I know a little bit about checkers because I used to play the game when I was around maybe 12 years old or something like that and see elderly people play checkers and whatnot. So I noticed that uh, accomplished checker players are people who studied the entire board. Yes. Not just their side of the board. In other words, if you're going to be what they call an expert checker player, to the best of my understanding, learning years ago, you know what moves your opponent is going to make before your opponent makes them. And within the context of fighting, resisting, and or eliminating racism, this is something that I say that the victims of racism, which is what this program is really about, have to learn to study the moves of their opponents to the extent that you just about can tell what your opponent is going to do, that your opponent in this case, if you're a victim of racism, would be the racist, the people who believe in racism and are white supremacy, which is racism. You must study them enough to know or to approximately guess what they are likely to do before they do it in matters that involve you. Otherwise, there's no way of defeating racism. Yes. And um, Andy knew that, according to his thought, his speech and his action, using the rock hammer, that it was going to take a long time. So he kept his focus on the 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 goal using that rock hammer is that correct yes but the, the but the rock hammer was a tool just like i made the analogy uh the equivalent that was raised the question was raised what would be the rock hammer when you're talking about counter racism mm -hmm. and i just recommended my book and yes. a lot of other books not just my book but i would say that uh you know, since I wrote it, a book that is designed to help a person do that, the Rockhammer Principle, uh, that you could kind of start with that. And you read dozens of other books, and uh, certainly you must do that. And books written by the racists themselves. Exactly. I mean, uh, that w which is a part of it, uh, of this overall strategy. Mm -hmm. but, but, see, these are just tools. But you also work, and... Here's where I make reference to another movie. What did Michael Corleone say? Because you're dealing with gangsters when you're dealing with the white supremacists, with racists. They're gangsters. They are, they are capitalistic, communistic, socialistic gangsters. Yes. The top of the line. The world has never invented anybody like them. I mean, as far as power and ingenuity. I mean, uh, they put it all together. It's an excellent system for getting things done. But the problem is it gets things done at the expense of many corpses, many destroyed people by the millions and millions and millions. But it gets things done materialistically. But then that's another uh, story that we can talk about. Yes. Uh, that's the general frame of reference. Mm -hmm. But in order to bring it down, you have to study how it's put together and uh, the people who put it together and how they go about operating in all nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. You have to know how the races operate in all of these areas of activity. Otherwise, there's no way to efficiently defeat racism and replace it with a system of justice. Exactly. But the tools that you use, or any tools, words, that's what books are for, words. So you can read many books. You also look at television. A lot of people say, well, I don't look at television because it's nothing but a bunch of propaganda and whatnot. Well, you learn the propaganda. Always look at anything that exists. A leaf on a tree, a bird flying 
through the air over over your head, something you may not pay, pay attention to ordinarily. Why? Because it's there. Anything in your universe affects you, either directly or indirectly. Yes. Talk to him at radio.com. It's a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and politics. Now, here's one that I'm going to share with you, and it is Wiggins World. Yes, host Stacy Wiggins will bring all the latest information that you need in his world. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that is, but I'll tell you what you can do. You can check it out on TalkTainmentRadio.com because it is exclusive to this radio station, and you will find it interesting, trust me. So all you have to do is go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage, click on Programs for the Scheduled Times. TalkTainmentRadio.com. That's radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host on The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we've been talking, and we'll be doing this all throughout the show about the rock hammer, metaphorically, in our fight for justice. And if you want to call in, you may. The phone lines are now open. 1-877-932-9766. As a matter of fact, we have a caller right now. Caller, go ahead. You are now on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I have a question for Mr. Fuller. Um, in um, in the nine areas of uh, people activity, is there any area uh, which you may find there has been uh, notably a chink in the armor, so to speak, or any type of loophole where uh, victims can find a way through either either uh, around uh, or through uh, racist barriers, if that makes any sense. Yes, all of the areas of activity. Well, where there's great strength, there's also weaknesses. That's just a law of the universe. So, like, we're talking about the prison system and whatnot. There's a weakness in any prison system. The system of racism is a prison system. It imprisons people. It's designed to do that. But in any prison system, particularly one that shouldn't be in the first place, because the people who were put in the prison of racism were put in that prison charged with crimes. So what was the crime of black people? who were in the prison of white supremacy. The crime was being born and walking around breathing while black. That's a crime in the philosophy of those white people who believe in practicing racism. That if you're born black, you are a criminal and should be treated like one. So they fashion a system of white supremacy that is the prison walls, you might say, and the prison philosophy of how to handle these quote-unquote criminals. People born with color in their skin, they are guilty of the crime of having what? Color in their skin. This is white supremacist philosophy. It doesn't have anything to do with how nice a person you are, or what your ambitions are, or what your goals are, or how you, you know, what you think about this, that, and the other, and whatnot. You're just automatically just a flat-out criminal. It's nothing to you. It's nothing to you. You should be treated like a criminal. And criminals, how are criminals treated? They are put into restricted areas, things that they can't do. You can't go here. You can't go there. You can't have this. You can't have that. You should be watched at all times. And you should be periodically beaten and killed in order to keep you in your place, quote, unquote, as a prisoner. A prisoner of what? Of war. All right? So 
right out of the womb, or even before you come out of the womb, you are an outcast on the planet called Earth, according to white supremacist <clears throat> philosophy, if you are a person of color. So how do you counteract that? You counteract that from where you actually are. And so the entire code book, in answer to the question, and all code books are any, what is a code book? A code book is really anything that a person says and does that is defective. That's a counter-racist code book. It's all kind of codes, plumbing codes, housing codes. But a counter-racist philosophy, a counter-racist code, is designed to oppose and eliminate racism. Otherwise, it's not a counter-racist code or a counter-racist procedure or a counter-racist system. So any words that you use in answer to the question that are effective in eroding the system of racism, either swiftly or slowly, but some type of erosion, some type of opposition should be considered counter-racist in effect because it is counter-racist in effect. If it doesn't have the effect of eroding the system, then it's really not counter-racist anyway. It doesn't qualify for the title. So these are words and deeds in answer to the question. Everything that you say and everything that you do, if you're a prisoner of the war against racism, you're a prisoner of racism, but if you're going to counter war against racism, you have to have a procedure, and the procedure consists of thought, speech, and action, what you think, what you say, and what you do, and this is each and every day, and that's something that we do not have collectively as prisoners of war, the war between those who believe in racism and those who don't, and we're already born prisoners. So in order to destroy the system of racism, you have to work from inside to prison, because that's where you are. Yes. You're no place else. You have to work from where you are. You're inside of the prison. There's no such thing as working outside. Yes. And so you have to adopt prison of war principles for getting out of a prisoner of war prison. Okay? It's the same principles. Yes. This is what Andy Dufresne did in the movie. Yes. Sean he said. understood where he was. He was in there on a fraudulent charge. All right? Just like the non-white people of this planet are under the system of white supremacy on a fraudulent charge. Because being a person of color should not be a crime, but the white supremacists, the people who thought up the system of white supremacists, made it a crime. Yes. They declared that it was a crime. If you have got color in your skin, black, brown, red, or yellow, you're a criminal. And you should be treated like a criminal. You should be beaten. You should be enslaved. You should be watched at all times and kicked around and... and and made a joke of, and call names. This is your mission. This is your reason for being, according to the white supremacist philosophy. Okay. Let's go to the Gmails. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this comes from Sudi. He says this, Mr. Fuller, a few times I've talked with people who described themselves or labeled themselves as a nihilist, a viewpoint that traditional values and beliefs are unfounded, and that existence is senseless and useless. To my conclusion, uh, to 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 my conclusion, I think many of these individuals take this position as a way to demean and or devalue the gift of existence, and from the responsibility to try and make this world better a better place by establishing justice and correctness. Now, my question for you, Mr. Fuller, is this. How 
do you have a corrective or constructive interaction with someone who holds these kinds of views in the system of white supremacy where we should all be grateful for our gift of life and be solving problems? Thank you. Just keep solving problems. Racism is a problem. So you stay the course. <clears throat> to use a cliche saying, you take the position that you say that racism should be replaced with a system of justice, which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated, guaranteeing also that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. That's the compensatory definition for the word justice. You have to guarantee those two things. Guarantee, number one, that no person is mistreated anytime, under any circumstance. And number two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. And then center on that. Don't ever forget that. That's the goal. And so anything that helps you to get that goal, you are supportive of it, all right? And take that position regardless of what anybody says about anything, white or non-white, uh, regardless of anybody who, who has, you know, whatever their philosophy is, uh, political or religious, you still take that position. That's your position. You lock on to it and you stick with it. Replace the system of racism, which is the most powerful governmental system on the planet, among the people of the planet Earth at this particular time. Replace that system with a system of justice. And I just gave you the description of what justice would be. Just two parts. And latch on to that. And anybody who says, well, I, I, don't, you know, I don't have time for that, I'm not interested in that, or I'm opposed to that, or whatever they say, that, let them talk. Let them say that whatever it is that they say. But when you say that you are for replacing the system of white supremacy with the system of justice, stick with it. That's the whole idea. You don't waver regardless of what anybody says about anything. You say that is your mission. That is your assignment. That is your reason for being. Why? Because according to compensatory logic, counter-racist logic, that would be. There is no other reason for being here on the planet and carrying out what apparently, as a victim of racism, should be your assignment. We all give an assignment. And that's the most logical assignment that a person of color can possibly have. Alrighty. According to counter racist logic. Okay. Coming up next, this question comes from Brother um, Rahim, but I wanted to ask you first Have you f uh, finished or are you completing your list of movies? A question was asked about that because we're going to try to get a list of the movies that you recommend that, that we uh, mo uh, uh, produce or rather promote or you're going to promote. So have you worked on that list, or do you know what the names of some of those movies are? Well, I have about a list of about 40 movies, and uh, I have completed the list some time ago, but I want to work out some some way that I can say what to look for, and uh, I don't think I can be able to do that uh, and put it on, on my website. Uh, I can put the list on my website. I intend to do that. Yes. And you can also do it in talktainmentradio.com if you wanted to. Yes, that's uh, what we were discussing. Yeah, right. To put that but, up there. But uh, I want all of the features, the, the lessons. See, I think that anytime anybody presents a book or a story or anything, fiction, nonfiction, or whatnot, you should look for it for the lessons. If you go to a movie, if the movie doesn't have any lessons in it, if it's just a whole lot of people moving around saying things and doing things and you don't come out of having learned anything, because uh, for black people, black people should 
learn something from every situation that they are looking at that they can use in a constructive manner. That is the whole purpose for entertainment, including this program, Talktainment Radio. Dot com. Learn something. Try to learn something that you can use. Use for what? To solve whatever problems you have, because black people always said they have plenty of problems. So if you go to a movie, blockbuster movie or whatever it is, I mean, whatever new movie is coming out and everybody's lined up around the block to see, because usually we just go by uh, whatever people hear about is Hey, you got to see this movie, man. I mean, you got, this is a movie you got to see. This is a must-see movie and whatnot. You come, you go and, and sit down and see that movie. I don't care if it's three or four hours long. You should come out of that movie with saying, now, it's one thing that I hadn't thought about, I mean, that I am going to take into consideration to improve my condition okay. in a very constructive manner that I learned from having seen that movie or having read that book or having talked to that person on the telephone. If you talk to a person on the telephone, when you hang up that phone, you should be able to say, now, I got a little something out of that that makes sense, okay. all right, that I think that I can use for a constructive purpose. Otherwise, you don't have any business talking to anybody anytime. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't even know what you're looking for or what you're talking for. And we've got to get out of that habit. We've got to start uh, making our, all of our thinking razor sharp. What am I getting out of this that makes sense? Okay. And definitely that's got to be in that entertainment field, which we spend a whole lot of time turning on television, going out to see movies, going to see stage plays and all like that. Walk out of there with one thing in mind. What did I learn from having been here, from having had this experience that can be used by me to improve my condition All greater right. than what it was before I went in there? Mm -hmm. That's the way it's always supposed to be. Okay. So in making up this movie list, it's a little difficult. You know, I have to do some thinking when I make up a movie list. And I have to have some idea about why I'm having a recommending that a person see that particular movie. Because that's a fast way of getting it without having to go through four or five semesters of school work. Okay. I mean, to get the same principle that you can get in a movie. See, when people started setting up schools, originally, there wasn't any such thing as television and movies. So if you're going to learn something, learn anything, you had to probably get in a wagon and uh, uh, go by, you know, a dirt road, I mean, a long distance to hear somebody talk. I mean, you know, on some mountainside or something, you know, because they didn't even have buildings back then that were adequate to house a lot of people. So people sometimes just stood up on a rock and talked. But you came away from there having learned something that you didn't know before. Yes. Now, you have to, a little thing right in your hand where you can draw information to you. All right? And movies are a way of doing that. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and so you just fast forward. Hey, you know, I don't have to go to no meeting and sit there for six, you know, all day long waiting on a speaker to come out on a stage and whatnot when I can get that same information by pushing a button. Okay. Uh, Brother Rakeem, uh, we're going to take this phone call first, and then we'll get to your Gmails. Okay, caller, you are now on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead with your question. Am I on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, caller, go ahead. Hello? Okay, uh, Mr. Fuller, good morning. Uh, Mr. Fuller, in your book, The Compensatory Code, you, you, make a, you make a very fine point about constructivity in terms of how if the victims of rights, white supremacy racism are engaged in the maximum degree of constructive and productive behavior, um, it's very hard for white supremacists to get there or to vent their spleens on them. When you look at the Asian-American community, um, 
they face racism just as much as we do, but because of their level, their high levels of productivity and constructivity manifesting itself in the fact that one out of two adults in their community has a college degree, one out of two people in their community is self-employed, it's very hard for white people to, to basically vent their spleens on them. So can you re-emphasize the point to the victims of white supremacy racism, what, why, why it is so important to engage to the maximum degree possible in constructive behavior and productive pursuits, please? Well, it's, it's, it's self-evident, uh, or it should be, and that is you have two types of behavior, constructive, non-constructive. That's all. There's nothing in between. I mean, that's even uh, uh, in regards to animals or creatures or ants or flies or, or roaches or birds or babies. Babies are either going to do something constructive right there in that crib or they're going to do something non-constructive. Okay, there's just two categories of behavior in the entire universe for all creatures in the universe. And black people, more than anybody, need to learn where their dividing line is because we think it's just all the same. We've been taught that, trained that way by the white supremacists. But just, just do something, anything, any kind of old way. Just wake up in the morning and go around on the streets and whatnot and just walk around and just, just do something. Oh, man, ain't, you know, it's just something to do, man. I mean, it's all the same. You know, everything that you do is all the same, whether it's up, down, sideways. That's why we behave like that. We better be that way. And that's the definition of the N-word. No direction. No type of concentrated thinking. No type of plan for anything. Just walking around bumping into things like a creature with no head. Okay? And so, that is the difference. Constructive, non-constructive. It's not complicated at all. So what some non-white people, you know, and all non-white people have gone through it, or they wouldn't be in the shape that they're in. But some of them are getting the pro progress out of that based on what? Saying, hey, we're not about doing things that don't make sense anymore. We've been doing it for a thousand years out of habit, out of what we call tradition, out of what we call our culture. Pass it on from generation to generation. Wait a minute. See, some non-white people in the world have stood back every now and then, not enough, or we wouldn't be in the shape that we're in as non-white people, but a few of them, you know, are a little more advanced than others in the prison system of white supremacy. And why? Where does that advancement come from? Just what you just said. You said some people have stood back and looked at some of the silly things they've been doing for a thousand years and say, we're not doing that no more. That's all it is. You just make a choice. I'm not doing this. I'm not contacting people. I mean, uh, have another Mardi Gras. I mean, you know. <laughs> no. I've got more important things to do. We can have Mardi Gras after we straighten out all this mess. Okay? We're not going to have a celebration of this type and the other. We, we're not going to, you know, dance around a fire. I mean, you know, just, and talking about our ancestors and all like that. We're going to pay attention to what's going on right now and get some of this burden off of our shoulders. Dancing around a fire ain't going to cut it, all right? Another barbecue in the backyard is not going to cut it. We're going to pay attention to things that need doing first, and we can have the barbecue later. But pay attention to things that need to be done. So just calling up somebody just to be calling them up just because you happen to have a way of calling them up through technology, we should eliminate that. That's one of the first things we should eliminate. Just because you have the means of contacting people doesn't say that you contact them. No. You say, am I going to say something to this person or that person is going to say something to me that's going to be of maximum constructive benefit to either one or the other of the two of us or to both of us? And if the answer is no, I'll just be what you call chatting. You know, hey, hey, bro, what's happening? You know, no, no more of that. No more of that, ever. We can just say, we can make that decision right now. That doesn't take a whole lot of training. We 
they keep thinking, it's time to raise their science, that, oh, this is going to take a long time, and we're going to have to, you know, this is going to be a long struggle. See, we like to talk like that. So we put bricks in our own way. When all we have to do is just stop doing a number of things. It's easier to stop doing some things than it is to start doing more difficult things. Mm. And so you, one of the major things with non-white people, particularly black people in the Northwestern Hemisphere, people who are designated as being classified as black and are Afro-American or whatever you want to call it, Negro, whatever, okay? That category of people, Northwestern Hemisphere of this planet, have habits that need to be discarded immediately. And one of the main ones, when people always say, Fuller, well, give us some specifics. You talk about this code, but what do, what do we actually do? What you actually do is just follow the code. And one of the main things in the code is you don't contact anybody. And you kind of let people know you don't want them to contact you unless they have something constructive to say. Otherwise, don't say anything. Now, that's painful for us. Because we love, we are absolutely traditionalized, programmed in the talking for hours on end and saying large quantities of absolutely nothing of constructive value. And we can stop doing that right this minute. Right that doesn't take any plan at all. Okay. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go. Download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller. To get in contact with the show, the phone lines are open, and you may call one 932 9766 but at this particular time, this is the time that we have scheduled for Mr. Fuller to speak about his book. So, Mr. Fuller, could you speak about your book, please? Yes, you can go to the website, ProduceJustice.com. That's like in production, production of justice, ProduceJustice.com. Quote, Produce justice.com unquote and what will come up on the screen is a brief description of a basic textbook and an additional word guide basically they are the same book that I couldn't get I had to make two volumes because I couldn't crowd it all into one volume uh, so I separated it the word guide from the basic code book. And I have the revised expanded edition there. I also have the original edition of the basic code book. Uh, recently, people have requested that. Oh, good. Because they said they got more out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they said they wouldn't have understood the revised edition. And I didn't understand that when people said that. Uh, because it's basically, I, I just updated the revised uh, the original edition, but they said there are a few things in the original edition that gave them a better thought process than is not exactly in the revised expanded edition. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. I do not understand that, uh, but some people have said that. So, since I go with whatever people better understand, because understanding is everything, okay? So I, I put out the, I now have the, uh, by request, I put the original edition. Okay. The 1984 edition up on the website, oh, too. Okay, all but right. But the two basic books that are there now uh, for people is the kind of compensatory kind of racist code and the word guide. But the revised expanded edition is the one if you don't get even if you don't get the word guide, I advise people to get the basic book, which is the revised expanded edition of the original uh, nineteen eighty four edition. Yeah, yes. 
Yes. And go to ProduceJustice.com. Yes. All, as a matter of fact, all three uh, books were uh, up on the screen, you know, right now. So that's good. Caller, could you turn down your radio? We're getting feedback. Please. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's all on. Caller, could you please turn down your radio because we're getting feedback. Uh, anyway, uh, they had it on the screen, Mr. Fuller, all, all three books, and I'm glad to hear that the uh, original 1984 book was on the uh, uh, up and by request. Okay, uh, let's do this. Uh, Brother Rakim, I'm trying to get to you, but we have a phone call. So, caller, uh, you are now on with Mr. Fuller. You can be heard. What is your question? Hey, good morning, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Um, so, yeah, I was just here talking with my wife, my partner. And uh, we're just discussing, you know, the the the, the topic of white supremacy, and um, a realization that we've come to is, uh, you know, based on what M Mr. Neely Fuller says, is as far as um, the people who can make a difference are not interested in making a difference, and the people who cannot make a difference are the ones who are interested and willing to to make a difference, but. We've realized that, you know, in the black community or, you know, not really community because it's not a community, but within the nation, within with black people, the world over, and even non-whites, if you want to say, um, you know, the people like who are living amongst the people who realize what our problems are today and want to make a change have no means of doing so. And, you know, it's like we can talk all we want to talk and have conversations with white people, have conversations with black people. Black culture is a distraction. So, you know, the majority of our brother, brothers and sisters that we need in order for us to free ourselves are so distracted, so caught up in, you know, celebrity, foolishness, and whatever whatever else drama they got going on in their life. So what would your question be for Mr. Fuller then? Well, I guess it's more so a VGQ, and I would oh, okay. to hear his perspective. Okay. I would like to hear his perspective on what I what I what I have to say. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like where where do you go? Because if you, all your people are so distracted, and the one the few of us who know better and are trying to do better, it's like we only get so far because it's only so few of us. Okay. And we're you know in a mass of um, foolishness, distraction, mm -hmm. whiteness, and so like the one some so I think some of us. When we get to that level, it's like we, we have to make a choice. Okay, let me give Mr. Gonna, Fuller a chance to respond. Black people? Let me, are we going to go? Well, I didn't really get to what I was going to, the, the, the meat of it. Because, like, a lot of educated black people will, will, will basically try to be white in their their demeanor and, and in their uh, the people that they keep around them. They're, they're going to have more white people around them. But they're not focused on white supremacy, so it's like they're, they're using that the whiteness that they could be using is, is null and void because they've given up their essence of who they are. Okay. So let, like, let, let me say what, this, what brother. I don't mean to cut you off, but we're up against time, so could you go ahead and get to the meat of it so Mr. Fuller can yeah, respond that, that to it. it? That was it. Okay. That was it. I, I really am just saying um, if, if the ones of us who do know better choose to surround ourselves with white people, then the, for the few of us who are aware and don't want to do that, don't want to go that route, what would you suggest as a, as a viable and effective, constructive way of eliminating white supremacy uh, amongst black people? Okay, Th thank you very much. Mr. Fuller? It is simply part of the code. I just say, I've been saying that all throughout the program. You already know that not everybody is going to want to do something constructive at the same time or any time, I mean, some people or whatnot, but you just do what you can and don't worry about it because the alternative is to do nothing, okay? And that, 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 should, be, that should not be an option at all. So you just do what you, uh, make sure that you are doing what you should be doing, carrying out your assignment. That's the whole idea. That's what I do. I just carry out my assignment. I don't check around to find out how many other black people are going along with it or anything like that. That's up to them. Because ultimately, it's going to have to be up to them anyway. So you don't worry about that. That's another thing you don't do. 
you know, whether it, whether it looks like war or well, I mean, black people just seem to, man, I mean, everything is just so bad. And sure it is, but you're, back, you're, you're born in a terrible situation. So the situation is just terrible anyhow. See, so what do you do in a hopeless situation, you might say? You try to give that situation hopeless with the little time that you got. That you try to give that situation, that hopeless situation, hope by doing whatever, following the code that you follow. And don't worry about the other people or how many there are in any given time. I mean, who will agree? Don't ever worry about that. I'm not looking for agreement. I'm just looking to put out the information I'm supposed to do, do what I'm supposed to do, and then let the chips fall where they may. Because that's all you can do anyway. Otherwise, you just wind up worrying about something that you can't do anything about anyhow. And that's not scientific. Mm. Okay. Uh, in the remaining moments that we have here, we're getting ready to close this first hour out. Well, I, I better do this. Brother Rakim, we'll try to get to you in the next hour. Thank you for the pleasure of your time. Talk to him at radio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next hour. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. TalkTainment Radio, worldwide sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k and World Network, LLC. Live call-in talk show. Dial 1-877-932-9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. All righty, welcome back to the second hour of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. here on TalkTimeAndRadio.com. We go where you go on the world's greatest radio. You are now in touch with the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. Let's get this out of the way. Your call-in number is 1-877-932-9766. You can also gmail me at the numeral 7 Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y, at gmail.com. You can listen live by going to the talktainmentradio.com homepage and hit the listen live button, and you're right there with the compensatory concept because we are on the air now with Mr. Fuller. You can do that. Also, you can go to the YouTube channel and type in the word talktainment, scroll down to the, uh, hit the space bar and scroll down to, uh, scroll down, and then you'll see where you can type in the word radio, and then talktainment number two. Do that, and then you're live with us, where you can see us and hear us, and uh, hit the like and subscribe button. And then also, you can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment if you want to hear the show in its entirety. Now, the, the day's topic is, is, been, is the uh, rock hammer uh, with the background of the Shawshank Redemption. If you missed it in the first hour, Mr. Fuller explained what that means and uh, Andy Dufresne, a character in the movie The Shawshank Redemption, and how he used a rock hammer to uh, gain what he wanted, which was uh, uh, a freedom from the prison system. But we are speaking metaphorically against the fight against racism, which is white supremacy. 
Uh, before I get to Brother Rakim, hopefully I can get to him. We're going to go to the uh, phone line. Okay, caller, you're on. You can be heard. Go ahead, please. Hello, yes. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good Mr. morning. Mr. Fuller. Okay, I have a question. Is the system of white supremacy racism the most powerfulest religion on the planet? Yes. Okay. According to evidence, a religion, first of all, what is a religion? A religion is a strong belief. Yes. Mr. Fuller, Mr. Fuller. Yes, sir. I don't want you to get long-winded. Okay. Just say yes or no. Okay, thank you. No disrespect. Oh, no problem. I have another question. Yes, sir. Um, And if so, wouldn't it be logical and would you consider for the sake of justice, to transform your code into a religion due to the enormous success that white supremacy racism has had functioning as a religion for centuries? Well, a religion by definition, a compensatory definition, is a strong belief backed up by action, so a person can say that. It wouldn't, you know, a person isn't prohibited from saying that. I mean, uh, I've heard expressions like a person uh, digging a ditch and digging it religiously. I've heard expressions like that. Depends on how you use or want to use the word. The word religion is just a tool, like all other words. Words are nothing but tools. Words don't mean anything, any word, until you give it a definition. So a person can define, like I did. I gave it that definition, a strong belief backed up, backed up by action. That's all the religion is. All right? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, no, that's not, you know, a religion is, you know, a religion is this and a religion is that. Well, that's that person's opinion of how they want to use the term. But all words, if I have, I put out a compensatory word guide because I discovered that years ago. I thought that words were you know, well, that people got together when I was taught. Well, let's just give a little history of how I was taught about words. Uh, going back to elementary school, I was taught that there was a, dic- a, a book called a dictionary in the English language, and it was a man named Mr. Webster, and Mr. Webster yes. had made a dictionary and that everybody religiously should follow that dictionary the way Mr. Webster wrote it. Now, later on, I found out that the word ain't was in Mr. Webster's dictionary, but it hadn't been there before. And then I found out that there were people called lexicographers. And I said, what's a lexicographer? They say a lexicographer is a person that makes dictionaries. I said, well, what do they do? And they say, well, they go around and see how people talk over a period of time. And that's how the word ain't that wasn't in the original dictionaries, that was a non-word. That was the word you're not supposed to use. It was a uh, variation of the word aren't. But people got in the habit of using the word ain't. And so then ain't wound up, I wound up to be in popular talk a part of the language, the English language in some places, not in all places, but in some places it's acceptable to use the word ain't when that was an absolute no-no back in the times when the English language was in its infancy, you might say, and not by Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster also did the same thing that other lexicographers did. And that is... Mr. Fuller, Mr. Yes. Fuller not to interrupt, I'm still I'm confused. Did you answer the question? I mean, the question was, would you consider... Would you consider um, changing your code or transforming your code into a religion? Because you did indicate person. Persons can do that. I know. I'm, 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 I'm saying no, but not not now. Here's what: if you're talking about organized religion, the answer is no. Zero. If you're talking
talking about the four wall system. I say that in the code book itself. Yeah, I remember you said something about four walls. All right, you the know, four wall system talks about that type of thing. Yeah. And it also says you have the open air system. The compensatory counter races code by Neely Puller is the open air system. Why? Because it's a compensatory code. You already have all kinds of religions out here already. Now, if you want one of those religions, or if anybody who wants one of those religions, choose one. I mean, some of those religions are anti-white supremacy. There are some religions that incorporate that in that. Join one of them or form one yourself. But that would be the full law system where you have an organization, where you have a preacher, a leader, and all like that. In the open air system, each individual is his or her own leader. You, you can. Yes. And yes. That, that individual person can say, well, my counter racist activity is my religion. A person can do that. But that's your personal religion. That, that The person standing next to you will say, well, it ain't mine. I mean, you know, so that's their choice, too. Everything is individual choice. But see, since you're addressing what I have written. No. The answer is no. If you're talking about organized religion around a group no, of people. About organized. No. Okay, well, what? Then, 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 uh, are you saying just put uh, the word religion on the entire code? Is that the, the question? question? Is, I, I'm yeah, trying to understand the question okay. now. Okay, let me, let me be clear. Religion is something you practice, right? Not preach is something you practice. So, for the sake of justice, would you consider transforming your code into a religion? A, a, a religion, uh, the word religion, you can attach it to anything that you are doing that fits the description of what a religion is, according to the code. A strong belief backed up by action. But say, yes. if one person says, well, counter-racist codification is my religion, but the other person says, well, now, it's not my religion. My religion is Catholicism, but counter-racist codification is my political philosophy. Well, that's his or her choice. They can call it what they want to. See, that's the flexibility of the code. That keeps people from doing what? The one thing that I have definitely committed myself to by writing this book, I mean, one of the major things, and that is to keep black people from going at each other about the way that they go about fighting racism. Black people have a tendency, more than anybody, to find a way, look around and find a way deliberately, to argue with other black people about the best way of fighting racism. Counter-racist codification, according to the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, is designed to prevent that from ever happening. I mean, there's no way to tap into that. Okay. There's okay. no way for me to have an argument. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to leave it there, I'd my like brother. To leave a quote. I'm, I, would li no, I would like to leave off of one quote by James Baldwin. He said, to be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all of the time. I just wondered if Mr. Fuller agreed with that or disagreed with that or understood that that quote. All right. Th thank you for your uh, quote there, thank Mr. You. Fuller. I appreciate it. Yes, I understand the quote. Okay. Okay. And he said, do you agree with it? Well, it depends on what Mr. Foreman meant by being enraged and what you do as a result of the invasion. I think it was James Baldwin, okay. Well, whomever it was, okay, well, I, I, I would have to have a discussion with him about that, but I can't do that no, he's, because he's, these he's, people are deceased. Yes, okay, let's go here. I've been holding off this brother for a long time, so let's get to his question. This is Brother uh, Rakim. He says, "Mr. good morning, Mr. Fuller. He says, according to compensatory logic, what is the constructive way to outlet the anger one may accumulate from dealing with non-white people who actively seek to bolster the system of white supremacy? 
by adopting the parts of the code that says you don't do that. What the next person does, standing next to you, there'll be a black person. I'll give this illustration. If I'm standing next to a black person, and I have done that, who says, it ain't no such thing as no white supremacy, and people that talk like that are talking a bunch of garbage, and I don't want to hear it, and I don't want to have nothing to do with people like that, and people like that should be, I mean, you know, done this with and done that with. Now, I have actually sat on podiums where people have said that, actually, after I finished speaking. There's no such thing as no white supremacy, and people who say that are making it up, and that's a bunch of nonsense. And so what is my reaction? The codified reaction that the code gives me, I say that person has said what he said, or she said, and that's my codified response. See, that's what I mean by razor sharp codification that you don't deviate from. When a person ridicules everything that Neely Fuller says, I say, hey, you're saying what you're saying. And so everybody should listen to what you're saying. I have actually been at seminars where a person from the back of the room, at least one time I can cite one instance, the Francis Crest Wilson Institute at Howard University Black, uh, Blackburn Center some years ago. I give an illustration of what you're talking about. The person from the back of the room said, you are misleading the people. It's people like you they are misleading the people. You're talking a bunch of garbage and whatnot. And I said, sir, calm down, all right? The compensatory code takes care of that. Because what you are saying may be true. So, the antidote for that is, step down here, sir, and I had a pointer in my hand, because I had a, a blackboard there. And I handed him the pointer, and I told him, say what he has to say. Give us the direction in which we should be going. And he took out a huge book and put it on the table, and then he started writing things on the wall, uh, on the blackboard. Mm -hmm. And I took up a seat. Because, <laughs> okay. see, the code calls for me to do that. Okay. Hey, if you got a, uh, hey, you got something better to say than what I'm saying, hey, take, uh, hey I, I'm not going to fight you. <laughs> you get no fight out of me. This is not going to be an argument. Hey. Say what you got to say, and see what the people that you're talking to say about what you got to say. You know, I'm not in your way. See, black people love to act like other black people are getting in their way. We love to play that little game. Or if it wasn't, if it wasn't for this person, if it wasn't for that person, if it wasn't for that 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 black woman up there in the Congress doing it, I mean, we would all be free. And I mean, if people would listen to me, we'd have it all together. It's millions of black people who say that. See, but, but codification does not allow that type of game, period. It shuts it down. Shuts it down by doing what? By saying, okay, you got the solution to the race problem. That's what we want to hear. Come forward. Come forward and give us the solution with our dumb selves. And your smart self is going to now put us on the correct track. So the gentleman came down. He, 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 you know, he was surprised that I took that position. Yes. Or see, everybody in the audience started talking about, hey, bro, Fuller, we'll throw this Trump out of here. He ain't got no business. I say, no, 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 you don't throw nobody out of nothing. No, 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 no. I mean, we're not in the business of just trying to make more enemies and start another Negro fight. We got enough of that. I said, have this gentleman. He's a victim of racism, in my opinion, just like the rest of us. He has equal voice. He has equal voice with Neely Fuller. Neely Fuller is nobody's God. I mean, I'm not your God. The white supremacists say that they are. So I'm not trying to take their place. So come down, sir, and express yourself. And he did. But at a certain point, after about 15 minutes, the people in the audience said, well, you know, we have heard enough of your point of view, so we'd like to hear, you know, from Mr. Fuller to continue what he was doing. Yes. And so I asked the guy's permission. I said, can, can I continue 
you know, what I was doing? Because the people in the audience said that they came here to hear me, you know, and that they have heard enough of you, so that's between you all. Y'all decide, mm -hmm. you know. Got it. So the people in the audience said, come on up, you know, pull up, you know. I mean, but they said, you know, they all patted, the, you know, the fellow on his back and all like that. He was, a, he was much older than me at that time, all right? He was a, what you call an elder. So they didn't throw him out, and he went back up and took his seat because oh. he had his say. He had his say, all right. No problem. All righty. TalkTimeAtRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news and lifestyle, sport, law, health, wellness, religion, hmm, and politics. Now, here's one I'm going to share with you, and it's called New Money. That's right, New Money. Now, Drew and Janae talk about this, and have you ever asked yourself, what is money and how does it work? Or do you really know what money is? I'll tell you what, they have, all, they have the answers for you on uh, new money and that show is exclusive to talk team at radio.com and all you have to do because you got the power is click on go to the talk team at radio.com home page click on for programs and then go scroll under and you'll find new money listen to it get some ideas or suggestions and work it out right there all that is from talk team at radio.com radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. We are really, uh, today's program is entitled The Rock Hammer, and Mr. Fuller has been giving demonstrations, uh, you know, about that. We've gotten a little away from that because we do answer any of your uh, questions or, or gmails. But we're focusing in on the rock hammer, how Andy Dufresne in the movie The Shawshank Redemption took a little thing like that, a rock hammer, kept his focus, and used that to, to make his way to freedom. It took him a long time, but he did it because he stayed focused and stayed true to his own goal. And if you have the YouTube channel, you can see some of the uh, references in there. As a matter of fact, they're doing it now. But this is what we're trying to do is to bring our focus in on how to go for justice and defeat racism, which is white supremacy. one 877 Uh This is from a brother in South Africa. He says this uh, at the time that this was uh, written, uh, July the 19th, as a matter of fact. He said, um, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Today is Mandela Day here in South Africa, and everyone is supposed to celebrate this special day according to to the system. My question is to you, Mr. Fuller, do you think a man can spend so-called 27 years in prison and come out and be president of a country without the usual suspects behind everything to control the minds of us in South Africa? Anything that the white supremacists do, they have in mind a plan supremacy. That's just a, I don't care what it is. If they put somebody in prison, it has to do with a plan to support white supremacy. If they let somebody out of prison, it has to do with a plan to support white supremacy. The white supremacists are very, 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 very scientific. They don't make any kind of move that's not going to add to their power. They are expert, experts at organized crime. So if I was going to, you know, commemorate Mr. President Nelson Mandela, I would basically talk about what he was in prison for. But he was in greater confinement for because he was already born in prison. Right, greater confinement. All right. But I call that greater confinement for 27 years. Okay. But what was he in there for? These are the things that I would talk about. I wouldn't have parades, I mean, where people danced and ate and gathered around and slapped each other on the back. But this is just my, 
the way that I look at it, I don't believe in that type of celebration. That's for when all problems are solved. But as long as problems are not solved, I believe that a so-called celebration, this is just my compensatory counter-racist opinion, it shouldn't be the traditional entertainment type affair. Yes. It should be business be meetings about how you correct the things that need correcting and using the words or using examples or using suggestions that Mr. Mandela may have made about how to go about doing things and only pick those things that worked because obviously some things didn't work Mm -hmm. because he wound up in greater confinement. See, so some things didn't work. But find out what mistakes Mr. Mandela made because, you know, we all make mistakes and uh, try to say, now, this is where mistakes were made. Now, what can we do to make things better without making the mistakes that our four uh, examples made? And go from there. Be very scientific. In other words, have a code. That's my suggestion. Yes. All right. That's not to say anything against what people are doing, but I think if someone would ask me what my suggestion is, look at what he did that worked and look at what he did that didn't work if you're just going to center everything around President Nelson Mandela. Okay. All right. The things that worked and the things that didn't work. And then try to come up with some ideas of your own of things that will work in order to make things the way that they ought to be today, 2018, in what you call the area of South Africa. Okay. Um, In the first hour, Mr. Fuller, in speaking of racism, you mentioned the, the term, and I thought a very compelling, the term of that that white supremacists and such like are the top of the line gangsters. What did you mean by that? Oh, white supremacists, what now? Oh, top of the line gangsters. That was the term you you used. Oh, out of any gangsters, you know, people talk about all kinds of gangsters. They talk about different gangs. I mean, you know, Latino gangs and whatnot, and gangsters. And you talk about the New York mafia and all that, and uh, Al Capone. I mean, in his gang. Uh, the Dillinger gang, uh, different kind of gangs, I mean, that are referred to all over the world at different times. But out of all of the gangs, those white people, not talking about all white people, but those white people who have chosen to be, as a choice, white supremacists to participate in the system of white supremacy, they are the strongest organized Criminals, gang criminals, organized criminals, that's what gangs are or usually referred to unless you're talking about a work gang or a labor gang or something like that. That's a different use of the word gang. But if you're talking about criminal gangs, there's no body in history that is as powerful, has proven to be as powerful and is efficient and as scientific as that gang that invented the system of white supremacy. Gangsters are what they are. Criminals are what they are who have criminalized under their regime all people of color everywhere on this planet called Earth. And that's what they set out to do, and they're the most successful business operation because they're a gang, but they're also a business. They're the most successful business operation that the world has ever seen. There's no comparison. You can't compare compare anything with the power of the white supremacists. There's no religion or collective group of religions that are proven to be more powerful than the white supremacists. The religion of white supremacy. So 
some aspects of the Godfather brought that out? Oh, yes. You know, oh, yes. The Godfather movies, particularly one and two, is all about a gangster operation on a small level compared to the gangster operation on that massive level, the superior level, the superior gang, the supreme gang, and that is, in capital letters, the system of white supremacy. There's no gang, there's no so-called country, there's no so-called political philosophy, communism, socialism, uh, capitalism, no ism that is proven to be more powerful than the system of white supremacy, racism. Because racism is white supremacy. White supremacy is racism. Wow. Now, the white supremacists themselves are now using the term white supremacy more and more, which means they intend to put it in a narrow frame of reference so it doesn't include them. Mm. See, the white supremacists are very skilled at doing what? Playing all sides of every argument. All sides. They are masters of that. Let me hold it there. Talk to him at radio.com. We go where you go. Check us out on 94.1. WGRN. Podcasts are available. All you have to do is download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Coming up next, my name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we've been talking about the rock hammer. And if you've been listening to the program, you know that it is taken from the movie The Shawshank uh, Redemption. Uh, the person, uh, Tim Robbins, I believe, played the part of Andy Dufresne, who was thrown in greater confinement on a charge that he did not do. But anyway, he used a rock hammer, a little small rock hammer, to make his way to freedom. And we're using that metaphorically to have you think about wherever you are, wherever you have, Use that as your way to produce justice. Anyway, um, Mr. Fuller, before we get to the Emmett Till question, uh, I'm compiling a list of, of uh, the movies that you constantly recommend because we are going to put it up on the TalkTainmentRadio.com home site, your recommendations of movies. Now, right now I have The Shawshank Redemption, Casablanca, Godfather 1, 2, and 3. Do you have three more quickly that you can name offhand? It doesn't have to be an official list, but... List of movies that could be inspirational. Hello, Mr. Fuller? Yes. Yeah. There's one uh, called that I saw recently. When I say recently, it was last year sometime. Put out by British Broadcasting Company, BBC. BBC. Uh huh. And it's called The History of White Supremacy. Okay. So I recommend that people start with that one. It's sort of like a semi-documentary. Okay. All right. History of the history of white supremacy, right in your face. Okay, by the BBC. I think that's the title of it, by British Broadcasting Company. Okay. Now, uh, you know, uh, someone showed it to me. I don't possess it myself, but I looked at it, and I would recommend that. Okay. As, as a beginning. As a beginning, okay. okay. And then uh, the next, I would say, would be I, Claudius, which is a 13-part series, and that take up a whole lot of time, all right, uh, okay. that I think that that was put out in the 1980s. I it was on public broadcasting mm -hmm. here in the Northwestern Hemisphere. It's about the Roman Empire, and it's a fast way to learn it. It will help uh, high school students, too. I mean, that's, you know, that's a... Uh, if they have to study Roman history and all like that, and have to read a lot of books and all like that, they can get a lot out of that series. Okay. And it's done in a very, I would say, uh, attention-getting, I don't like to say entertaining manner, uh, I just say, but it, it is entertaining. But it kind of keeps your attention more than a lot of the movies that I have seen. In okay. fact, that's the only one. Uh, series talking about the Roman Empire. Yeah, we have some that I recommend. Mm -hmm. I Claudius. Okay, and what? One more, if you can think of it quickly. Okay, then you 
can drop down to maybe uh, going with the wind. Okay. All right? Okay. I've got to do these things in historical sequence. Start okay. with the Roman Empire, which the ideas about racism and all like that seem to have something to do with that. Okay. Okay. Now, this is what I've compiled so far. Uh, okay. Uh, to the BBC History of the uh, history of White Supremacy, uh, I, Claudius, Gone with the Wind, uh, Shawshank Redemption, Casablanca, and Godfathers 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Yes, that's, that's well, good. Godfather 1 and 2, particularly. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, now. If you have time for 3, then you can throw that in. Okay. Now, get to this question about Emmett Till. It says, greetings, Mr. Fuller. Uh, uh, it has been recently reported that some people will reopen the case involving the torture and murder of Emmett Till over 60 years ago. If all the people, including the jurors that deliberated one hour before their not guilty verdict involved in this crime are deceased, what is the purpose of reopening the case? To cause confusion? Also of note, Emmett Till's mother Refusal to speak with anyone regarding this decision speaks volumes. What say you, Mr. Fuller? Well, for one thing, if uh, Emma Till's mother uh, doesn't want to have anything to do with it, that would be the first question that has to be answered, and that is why. And then if you're talking about what people are doing with Emma Till's image and all like that, then the mother of Emma Till would certainly, if she's making some remarks against it, that should be examined, and people consider that and what they are going to do in the response to this resurrection of a discussion about Mr. Emmett Hill. Yes. That would be the compensatory way to go. Yes. And or a person can do both. You can take into consideration what their viewpoints are, if you can find out what they are, and then uh, go and look and see what, uh, to the extent that the white supremacists have anything to do with it, and the white supremacists have something to do with anything that non-white people do, if it has any significance at all, and see what their purpose is. Okay. But always with the suspicion that they are up to something that they shouldn't be oh. up to. Okay, before I take this phone call, is there, just looking at it, because I know that you're just first hearing this, about this, is there a constructive reason why somebody would want to bring this up, in your opinion? I don't know, because I haven't heard anything about it. Okay. But, I, 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 but see, the code calls for me to take an interest in anything that's going on okay, on the you. planet. Okay. Okay. So I will take an interest in it, and I will do it with a viewpoint, though, that to the extent that the white supremacists have anything to do with it is to strengthen the system of white supremacy. Okay. I don't care what it looks like on the surface. Okay, gotcha. All right, uh, let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you can be heard. Go ahead with your question for Mr. Fuller. You talking to me, brother? Uh, yeah. They came, they saw, they conquered, they exterminated. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Emmett Till case ain't nothing but white supremacists playing games with us. Why would you bring up Emmett Till when you're letting police shoot black people down on camera and the police walk away? So you're going to go all the way back to Emmett Till and do something. That's game. Now, black people, listen very carefully. Our time in these wildernesses of North America is coming to an end. This is what these psychopaths do. They conquer people, and eventually they exterminate them. If you want a chance for life, if you're able to get out of here, you can get some young child, grandchild out of here. Get them out of here. You're not going to run away from white supremacy. I got that. They run the planet, and they run space. But you might go somewhere and be able to live your life out. Check this out. There's no government on earth fighting white supremacy. Everywhere they fight, those people are fighting for them to leave them alone and let them live a little bit. But they are not fighting white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Vietnam right now, they're not fighting white supremacy. Iraq is not fighting white supremacy. They saying, hey, boss, leave me alone. 
So that's what we have to think about. Okay. okay. Trying to go somewhere and live your life out. Okay, wait a minute. this stuff, okay, real quick, bro. No, 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 you, no, you're fine, you're fine. I just wanted to ask you a question, but I need to ask Mr. Fuller, may I ask you a question? Mr. Fuller, may I ask this gentleman a question that's been burning inside of me? A lot of people have been wanting me to ask this question, so may I ask him this question? Mr. Fuller. Trust me, I have to ask you before I ask him. Okay, a brother uh, from Chicago, you know all this stuff been going over there. You've always mentioned about get out of here and and, and and go somewhere. Okay, where will we go? That's been the question. Where will we go if this is global? Where will we go? Each person will have to decide that. Remember what I said. I agree with Mr. Fuller. White supremacy run the planet and space. But where are they going to hit next? Right now, they have been to exterminate black people. So if you go down in Mexico, they might not be getting ready to exterminate Mexicans. If you go down in Ecuador, they might not be exterminate them. So you might be able to go somewhere and live your life out. But I don't tell people that they are going to get away from white supremacy okay. when they run the planet. Okay. Now, people, Hitler, Mr. Hitler and Mr. Mussolini did not overthrow the power structure in Germany and Italy. Donna, Hitler, Mussolini, Dump did not overthrow the power structure in America. The power structure in America put him in to do exactly what he's doing. Well, and right. it's going to get worse. Yeah. The crazy talk he's doing is going to get worse. It has to get worse for them to carry out the plan of extermination. Okay. So, Thank you, my brother, because they, they, they wanted me to ask you that, and I said that I would the next time you call it. Be, hey, careful, uh, be careful in Chicago, man. Hey, brother, listen. What you, what's happening in Chicago, I'm glad you mentioned. What you see in Chicago is what you see in the world. White supremacy one-on-one. Okay. We got death squads killing black people here like it ain't nobody business. A lot of pe black people know it. But they're not going to say nothing because they ain't a damn thing they can do about it. Thank you Except so much. maybe get your hat. Thank you so much, brother. Death squad All are hitting black people across this country. All Thank right. you, brother. You're welcome, brother. Yeah, that's one of our, our callers who call in. Uh, they call him lovingly extermination man. But anyway, he, he does a good job on that. Mr. Fuller, this is a uh, time that we designate for you to speak about your book. Let me read the uh, promo here before we get in. Involved in here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it says talktainmentradio.com. We go where you go. Download the talktainmentradio.com dot com to your app or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. Of course, you know I am Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Fuller, and um, today's topic is the Rock Hammer. But this is a special time that we ask you to pay close attention to, not the donate hour, though we do want you to donate. But we want you to pay attention to what Mr. Fuller has to say about his publications. Mr. Fuller, go ahead. Uh, you can go to the website, ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. And what will come up on the screen is a brief description of the basic textbook the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, a compensatory counter-racist code. I have three titles here. I call one, this is equal to the other, but one, the third one is more explicit, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism. And, of course, racism is described Singularly, it's white supremacy. What I mean by singularly is that there is no other form of racism, even though the white supremacists will say racism takes all kinds of forms, all right? But it's just one that really counts. A lot of people may be racist in theory or in their desires, but only the white supremacists have proven that they are supreme in the field of racism. So that obliterates everyone who thinks that he or she is a member of a race because the white supremacists determine what racism is, and racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy is racism. But the racists will say anything. They will say that there are 
end of the races, as long as they, the white supremacists, are the supreme, which means that the other ones don't count anyway. They're the labels. So they invent, invent the system of racism, and that's what we should be singularly focused on. The inventors and the practitioners of the only form of functional racism on what we call the planet Earth. And the textbook workbook for victims of racism, if you don't consider yourself a victim of racism, the book does not apply to you in any way, form, or fashion. But if you consider yourself to be, indeed, a victim, because racism does have victims, somebody's got to be a victim. So it's just a question of who are the victims. So I say that I'm one. That's why I wrote the book. But it's designed for the individual victim. What can he or she do on a daily basis? Well, you know, what pattern of thinking should you have? You know, you can think anything that you want to, but if you're thinking about countering racism and eliminating racism, then you have to think about it a certain way because it exists. And you think about it in a way that works against it. So then that comes down to speech by working against it is how you speak. Thought, speech, action. You think, then you, on your job and all like that, what do you say? How do you say it? How do you not say things? And then it comes down to the action part. What do you do? If you happen to be on the job, and somebody uses the N-word, what do you actually do as an individual person? It should be a book, and I tried to write one, that tells you exactly what to do and what not to do in each and every instance in nine areas of activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. What to do and what not to do. Address to the individual person. Address each and every minute of the day of what to do and what not to do. I thought that we needed something like that. Because I say that that's the missing link. When it comes down to the doing part, first of all, the thinking, and then how do you speak? Because speech is a form of action, too, and then action. So what do you say? What do you say that works best for you in every situation? Always works for you, not against you. What do you do that always works for you and not against you? Do we have books to tell you that? Not enough of them. Other people should be writing this type of book, I always say. We have a lot of analysis, and analysis is important of what the problem is, but what an individual person can and should do each and every minute of each and every day. That's what I try to write to fill in the gaps, because people kept asking that question, and I was one of the first people among the thousands and millions, I guess, to ask that question year after year. What do you do? How do you, as an individual person, operate against racism? How do you think? How do you speak? When somebody says something to you, what do you say back? Exact words, exact words, not fumbling for words, exact words of what to say and what not to say and when to say it and under what conditions and to whom to say it and to whom not to say it. We should have guides, codes for that. All successful people have codes. All successful creatures, well, whatever you call successful, squirrels have a code. They follow the squirrel code, and it works for squirrels. It may not work for birds, but it works for squirrels. Now, victim of racism should have a code. Yes, sir. That's the one thing we don't have. Go okay. to ProduceJustice.com. All righty, ProduceJustice.com. All righty, uh, let's go to the phone lines. Okay, caller, you're on. Thank you for waiting. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? 
Uh, how you doing, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Brother Nuko from Baltimore, where we hold the constructive uh, action discussion here, this, uh, and we're doing it this Saturday at Stango Drive in Baltimore, uh, right across the street from Lake Clifton at 12 noon. Mr. Fuller, we just had a situation up here where um, we had over 100 young uh, teenagers fighting in a mall in a predominantly white neighborhood. And um, a lot of people, uh, as far as radio celebrities, I mean, not celebrities, but radio people are talking and telling the public to ask for an apology. Can you please express for my care unit in Baltimore, and I know we only have six minutes left, can you please express for the care unit in Baltimore and around the world how we should not ask for an apology, never, ever ask for an apology? Absolutely. You don't ever ask for an apology. You don't ever ask for love. And you don't ever ask for respect. Now, an apology is something that should be given. Otherwise, it's no good at all. The white supremacists apologize all the time. They don't care. How many do you want, buddy? Hey, you know, we, we got a truckload of apologists who are sitting right outside the door here. <laughs> I mean, you, you want three or four? Or I'll give you the whole truckload. How about that? You know, just go out there and pick what you want. You know, apologies all over the place. Signs saying apologies in all kinds of languages and whatnot. I apologize. Oh, I apologize. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, wow. Do. Oh, I apologize. Oh, I painfully apologize. I apologetically apologize. How many do you want? Well, we got them. We got warehouses of apologies. All right? So apologies what you want? You got them. Hey. You know, but because, you know, you value it so much, uh, we can take the position that, well, we'll be able, we'll think about maybe giving you one apologist, and maybe in about 30 years we'll give you two, and, you know, and, you know, that, that, that will slow things down, because since you value apologists that much, well, hey, we can play that game. I can give you a truckload right now, or I can give you just half an apology. And then the other half, every now and then, every hundred years. I mean, you know, we can stretch this thing out, all right? Since we're just dealing with apologies here, we ain't dealing with nothing else. We're not correcting nothing, but we, we will apologize. But, you know, how do you want it? Do you want it on an installment basis, or do you want a whole truckload at once? In fact, we can, if you want, to, want it, we'll apologize in advance for all the things that we're going to do. Try that on for size, buddy. You know? <laughs> I've been asked to the question. Never ask for an apology. Why? It ain't worth nothing when you ask for it. It ain't worth, it worth zero. You ain't got yourself nothing. You just think you got yourself something. And never ask for love. You know? There's an old song. I told you that I love you and I get out. <laughs> That's the actual name of a song? <laughs> That's the name of a song. It came out in the 1920s. All right, I think. <laughs> okay. I listen to that song. Ne Negro, you can add that yeah. to the song. Negro, I told you that I love you. Ooh, I love you. Like, right, get yeah. the blank, blank out of here. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> We always go for the drama rather than substance. We gotta get out of that. Oh, apologize to me. Oh, I need your apology. You don't need nothing of the kind. Compensate for all this damage that you've been doing. And an apology don't know where to cut it. There ain't nowhere in the neighborhood. Bring make things the way they ought to be. Okay, in every area of activity. And then that last one, respect. Black people kill each other all the time about give me some respect. That's another thing you never ask for. You give yourself respect. And what is self-respect? Self-respect is you refuse to tell yourself a lie. 
Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fur. Hey, Brother Muko, I'm going to call you off air, okay? Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fuller. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening, and thank you for participating. Yeah, now this is the Rock Hammer. You, uh, final words you want to yes. say about Rock Hammer before we... Uh, well, the final word is we all need a Rock Hammer, which we all need a personal code, which means do the things that work. Stop doing things that don't work, okay? Have a code for everything. Uh, try a lot of things and make sure that whatever you try always works and stick with it. That will be your own personal code. You don't have to wait for me to throw the code of five things. Just do things that work. Right. And stop doing things that don't work for your benefit and the benefit, constructive benefit of others. All righty. Well, there you have it. The rock. That's hammer. your rock hammer. That's your thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank right. you, uh, thank for, you. for the uh, pleasure sure. of your time. This is Talk Image Radio.